This is your FBI is next on ABC. A whirlwind of laughter is heading your way. Meet Corliss Archer every Friday night on ABC. America's favorite teenager has 101 schemes in her pretty head to keep you in hysterics. It's a screamingly funny trip back through time to your days of adolescence. The pranks are the same, the execution a bit different. And it's that difference that makes Meet Corliss Archer such a hilarious adventure into the realm of youthful misadventure. Every plan our lovable young miss makes turns into a situation comedy. For a full measure of fun, meet Corliss Archer tonight on ABC. This is your FBI, the official broadcast from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Presented transcribed as a public service by the American Broadcasting Company. Tonight, the subject of our FBI file, Auto Theft. Its title, The Divorced Child. The number one problem facing every law enforcement agency in the United States, including your FBI, is juvenile delinquency. That is a sobering fact, for from the younger generation must come the men and women who will run the nation in a few years. For that reason, it is up to everyone to do his or her share in fighting the problem, for we dare not leave the heritage of a morally corrupt generation to the world of tomorrow. It is a sad but undeniably true fact that the basic reason for the prevalence of juvenile delinquency today is the laxness of some parents. Parents who believe that it is possible to allow their children to just grow up by themselves. Nothing could be further from the truth. Tonight's FBI file opens in a residential suburb of a large Midwestern city in a comfortable home on a quiet, tree-shaded street. Gloria Baker, age 16, is sitting in her room. Her mother enters. Gloria? Oh, hi, Mom. I thought you were going to the bridge club. Well, I... I am. Late, aren't you? Oh, it doesn't matter. Gloria? Yeah? There's something I want to talk to you about, dear. Look, if it's the way I left the bathroom this morning, oh, I was... Oh, no, in... no, dear. This is really serious. It's about your father and me. Well? This trip he's taken, he didn't go away because of business. What do you mean? We're getting a divorce. Mom! Oh, I know this is a shock to you, darling, but... Mom, you... You're kidding! No, I'm sorry to say I'm not. Oh! Now, now, dear. You can't do it, Mommy. Don't you see... You just can't. Oh, Gloria, dear, it it won't be too bad. Your father and I have arranged everything in a in a very friendly fashion. And no. Darling, we knew you had to be considered too. So we agreed to share you. What does that mean? You live with him six months of the year and with me six months of the year. I want to live with both of you. Together. Oh, darling, that's impossible. Why? Because because your father and I are finished. Oh, Mommy, isn't there anything I could do? No, dear. If you've had a quarrel or something, I could patch it up. Honest, I could. Oh, it's beyond that, darling. (laughs) Oh, now, please, darling, don't carry on like that. You're only upsetting me. (laughs) Gloria, look, maybe after a while, you'll have a new daddy. What? Someone who'll take care of us both a lot better than your father has. You mean... You already have someone else in mind? Mommy, have you? Well, yes. Oh, no. Oh, he's a very nice man, darling. I'm sure I don't you... want to hear any more. Gloria, where are you going? I'm getting out of here. Gloria! Gloria! <laughs> What 
What's the matter with this jukebox? Busted. Oh. I can sing for you, Wendy. Drop dead, will you? Hi there, Gloria. Oh. Hello, Wendy. You got a private booth here? No. Sit down. Okay. Want some of my Coke? No, thanks. I just had two Frosteds. Hey, is something the matter with you? Why? Well, I've been watching you for the last ten minutes. You really look down, girl. I am. Well, now, just put your head on Aunt Wendy's shoulder and tell all. What is it, sugar? Wendy, I'm just miserable. Man trouble? Oh, no. It's my mother and father. Well, what about them? They're getting a divorce. <laughs> Is that all that's bothering you? Wendy, it's horrible. Oh, you're so provincial. Huh? It happens to everybody. Oh, no, Wendy. Honey, my father and mother have been divorced for over two years. They have? Sure. And when it first happened to me, I felt just like you do. Really? Yeah. And then one day, I figured something out. I figured if they could divorce each other, I had a perfect right to divorce them. And that solved everything. What do you mean? Well, from then on, I've lived my own life and nobody's ever bothered me. What about your mother? Oh, she's so busy going out all the time, she doesn't know what I'm doing. Gee. Gloria, believe me. You should do the same thing. How? Well, oh. Look, what are you doing tonight? I... I don't know. I'm not going home. That's one sure thing. Perfect. Let me get you a date. Who with? Yeah, none of the squares around here. I know some older fellows, more sophisticated types. Would you, would you like to meet them? Well, sure. Why not? Swell. But I'm not dressed for a date. Oh, you can wear something of mine. Hurry up, finish your coke, and we'll go over to my house and call them up. Club someplace. Gee, what a mob. Oh, there they are. Marty! Marty! Shall we go over there? Are you kidding? Make them come to us. He sees you. Uh-huh. And he's coming, too. Which is my day? The tallest one. Oh, he's cute. Hi, uh. Hi. Uh. Hello, Wendy. Hi, Mac. I want you both to meet a girlfriend of mine. Gloria Baker, this is Marty Powell and Mac Hanford. How do you do, Hello. Marty? Hello, Hello Gloria. Mac. Oh. How's about we sit down and go against a couple of beers, huh? You got a table? Yeah, right there. Uh, look, uh, we're going to powder our nose. We'll be right back. Okay. Come on, Gloria. Will you please excuse us? Hmm? Oh, sure, sure. Order us a couple of beers while we're away. Right. Well, Mac, what do you think? My date? Yeah. Uh, not bad. It looks a little square, though. Look, if she's a friend of Wendy's, she's okay. Uh, what'll we do with him? Well, we stay here a while and make the rounds. We ain't got no car. We will have. In fact, I can take care of that right now. What do you mean? Steal one. Oh. <laughs> what about the dames? You stay here. Feed them some beer. I'll pick up a heap and be back in an hour. In the nearby city at police headquarters, FBI Special Agent Jim Taylor is seated with an old friend, Detective Sergeant Charles Winslow. This is kind of a dirty trick to play on you, Jim. Why? What do you mean? You're supposed to be having a night off, so you wind up sitting around here listening to my troubles. <laughs> Glad to do it, Chuck. You know that. Well, come on. Let's have your story. Well, as you know, my assignment for the past few months has been juvenile delinquency. Yeah. It's a full-time job, believe me. I'll bet it is. One element I've come across has an FBI angle... Oh, what is it? Stolen cars. Mm -hmm. Two of them were picked up here in the city this morning. They've been stolen in the suburbs and taken across the state line. Stolen by youngsters? Mm, it appears that way. Were they apprehended? No, but I'm sure kids did the job. Oh, why, Chuck? Well, for one thing, they weren't stolen for profit. They'd been used overnight and then abandoned. Mm -hmm. And in both cars, the upholstery had been slashed, clocks broken, acts of pure vandalism, typical of misguided kids. Did the uh, local police where the cars were stolen have any leads on the car thieves? No. 
Chuck, have you had your dinner yet? No, I haven't. Well, neither have I. Now, look, let's go get something to eat, and we'll talk this thing over and figure out an angle. Gloria? Yes, Mac? How about another beer? Well, <laughs> yes. How about you, Wendy? <laughs> Huh? How about another beer? I want something stronger than beer. And, and what's more, I want another date. No, look, look, Marty will be here. You've been saying that for the last hour. Oh, Wendy, you're being a very bad sport. We're supposed to be having fun. That's what you told me, remember? Some fun, sitting here watching you... Hey, here he is now. Well, it's about time. I can't... Where have you been? You've got some nerve... Now, relax, sweetheart. But out getting us some transportation. You want a beer, Marty? No, not here. Let's go someplace where there's some real action. Huh? Oh, wonderful. I've got a good mind to go home. Look, I don't want no trouble with you. Mac, you paid up here? Yeah. Then let's go. Come on, Wendy. Okay. Where are we going, Marty? Oh, we hit the river club first. Oh, Wendy, I'm having such a wonderful time. No more worries, huh? Oh, I should say not. <laughs> Come on. Come on, Go Wendy. on. No, you go on. Hey, where's the car? Right over there. That big convertible? Yeah. Nice going. What are we riding in? This little job here. Marty! Gee, that's carbonated. I'll say. Where'd you get it? Stolen. <laughs> Always the comedian. <laughs> All right. Pile in, girls. <laughs> Hello. Hello, Jim. This is Chuck Winslow. Oh, hello, Chuck. I'm sorry to bother you at home, Jim, but I just came back here to headquarters and I found a report I thought I should pass on to you. Oh, what is it? Uh, it came from out in Blackton. A car was stolen out there about an hour ago. Yeah? It belonged to a Dr. Brown. Stopped at a patient's house while he was inside. His car was taken. Yeah, I see. He saw the thief from a window and described him as about 18 years old. Was the thief alone? Yeah. The doctor attempted to follow him in his patient's car, but he lost him right after he crossed the state line. Was he heading in here to town? Appeared that way, yes. Mm. Chuck, has an alarm been sent out? Yes, we've alerted all local police. Given them a complete description of the car. Now, you say you're at headquarters, huh? That's right. Okay, I'll be right over. Hey, Marty, where are we going? Around the corner. Oh, I love going around corners. Now, where are we going? Where do you want to go? Well, I don't want to go home. <laughs> it's 4 a.m., kid. Everything's closed. I know a place. It's never closed. Where? New York. Oh, silly. What do you mean, silly? What's wrong with New York? It's a thousand miles away. So what's wrong with that? He's right. Let's go to New York. You mean that, Wendy? Sure. Let's go right now. Okay. Wait, Marty. Important detail. Money. We'll get money. Whee! You're going to New York. Honest. Wendy, are we really going? Sure. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> what, what What? are you slowing down for? Pulling into this gas station. Oh, that's very smart of him, Wendy. We're going to New York. We have to have gas. <laughs> Is it open, Marty? Yeah, it's an all-night place. Come out, come out, wherever you are. <laughs> Oh, here's the guy. What can I do for you? Well, first, I want you to check the right front tire. Okay. Well, it looks okay. Marty! Shut up. Search him first, Marty. He may have his dough on him. That's what I'm doing. What is this? What's happening? He, he hit him on the head. We gotta get to New York, don't we? Gloria, let the boys do this their way. But I don't like this. I'm getting out. Here's his dough. <laughs> Good roll. Hey. All right, wait a minute. Where are you going? I'm getting out. Get back in there. But I get don't Get back, I said. Oh. Now let's get out of here. In 
In just a moment, we'll return you to tonight's dramatic case from the official files of your FBI. It's nice every now and then to go back to the old school where you studied when you were young, but if the schoolhouse of your childhood is still being used, perhaps you should ask yourself a few questions. Just how old is that building? What sort of shape is it in? How many more children are being jammed into it nowadays than when you were a youngster? Education is a tool, and a poor tool can mean a dull life. As our population increases, we need more and better schooling facilities for the growing number of school-aged children each year. Remember, education molds our future. Better schools build a stronger America. Join your local civic groups and school boards and work for those better schools. And now back to the FBI file, The Divorced Child. In a past statement to the listeners of this program, Mr. J. Edgar Hoover, director of the Federal Bureau of Investigation, said that one prevalent reason for delinquent children is delinquent parents. Tonight's case from the files of your FBI is ample proof of that fact. Do you know the friends of your children? Do you know where your children are when they leave the house? Do you know how your children are getting along at school? Those are questions that you who are parents should be asking yourselves. For the danger is not in the child who is occupied in healthy endeavor, but the future juvenile delinquent is the child who has too much unsupervised time on his hands. There are various agencies like schools and local youth organizations which can help you guide your child, but they can do only just so much. They cannot do a complete job because there is no substitute for parents. Tonight's file continues at the gas station. An hour has passed since the holdup. The attendant has regained consciousness and is being interviewed by Detective Sergeant Winslow and Special Agent Jim Taylor. You say that the car was a gray convertible, huh? Well, that's right. Were you able to get the license number? Well, no, everything happened so quickly. By the time they pulled away, I was unconscious. Oh, I'm sure it's the doctor's car, Jim. Yeah, it sounds like it. Can you describe the young man who assaulted Jim? Well, I... I'd say he was around 18 or 19 years old. Yeah? Uh, he had dark hair, he was about my size, wore a sport coat. Mm -hmm. Can you think of anything else about him? No. Who else was in the car? Well, two girls and another fella. Well, could you describe them for you? <laughs> no, sir, I'm afraid I couldn't. Oh, excuse me. Sure. Chuck, where's that girl's car? I have it right here. Now, the attendant says he found this with a gas pump. Oh, that's right. Could have belonged to one of the girls in that car, huh? Yeah. Sergeant Winslow? There we are. Yeah? That call is for you. Oh, thank you. How's your head feel? Well, it's <clears throat> not too bad. Uh -huh. You got a doctor look at that, yet? Well, yes, an ambulance was here. I, I'm going to drop by at the hospital for an x-ray later. Oh, good. Oh, uh, that scarf that you found, do you think it was dropped by someone in that car? Well, yes, I, I'm sure it was. I just cleaned up around here ten minutes before they came. Mm -hmm, I see. How much money did they get from you? Well, it's over $300. Jim? <laughs> That's quite a bit. Yeah, Chuck. It was headquarters. The stolen car was just found, abandoned out on Route 30. No trace of the occupant? Not yet. They're going over the car now for fingerprints. Chuck, what time the laundry's open in this town? About 8 o'clock, I believe. Why? There's a laundry mark on this girl's scarf. Now, if we do a quick check with the laundries, we should be able to learn the identity of the owner. That's right. Wendy, my head, it hurts so. I feel awful. Well, that figures. Why? Honey child, you have what is known as a hangover. A hangover? Darling, you weren't drinking milk last night. Oh. Where are we? In a tourist cabin. What? How did we get here? We came here last night, remember? Last night? Yes. 
Oh. Now I do remember. The gas station. That man. That man the boys robbed. Quiet. Oh, that was terrible, Wendy. Will you shut up? Where are they? Mac and Marty? Yes. They dropped us off here. They went out to dump the car. Oh, thank heavens. What do you mean? We're rid of them. Rid of them? They're coming back here for us. They're what? Look, we're all going to New York, remember? Oh, no, Wendy. The boys are picking up another car. And, and you want to go with them? Well, sure, why not? Well, I don't. Wendy, I want to go home. To your mother? Yes. <laughs> I thought you couldn't put up with her getting a divorce. Anything is better than this. I'm not going with you. Look, honey, you haven't got much choice. What do you mean? We were all in that stick-up last night. I didn't want any part of it. I even tried to get out of the car, don't you remember? That doesn't make any difference. You're in this just as much as the boys are. Oh, this is awful. Look, Gloria, <laughs> everything is awful because you've got a hangover. Listen, there's a lunch wagon across the highway. We'll go over there and get some breakfast. I'll guarantee you that after you've eaten something, you'll feel altogether different. Mrs. Baker? That's right. Mrs. Baker, my name is Taylor. I'm a special agent of the FBI. FBI? That's right, ma'am. Here are my credentials. I... I see. May I come in, please? Oh, yes, of course. Thank you. Mrs. Baker, I've come here to talk to you about your daughter. You know where Gloria is. You found her. Well, she isn't here? Well, no, she didn't come home all last night. Just about ten minutes ago, she called... And she was crying and said she was in trouble and she was going to New York. Mm -hmm. Before I could question her any further, she hung up. Well, did she say where she was? Well, no. Why are you here? Well, I'm sorry to say I have reason to believe your daughter was involved in a gas station holdup at about four o'clock this morning. Oh, that can't be. Do you recognize this scarf? Well, yes, it, it belongs to Gloria. Well, it was found at the scene of the holdup. One of the girls in the car dropped it. Oh, but this is impossible. Gloria couldn't be involved in anything like that. Well, you just said, ma'am, that she hadn't been home all night. But this is the first time it ever happened. Gloria's a good girl. She never stays out. And she wouldn't have last night if... If... Well, if... Yes, ma'am? Well, yesterday afternoon, I had to tell Gloria that her father and I are getting a divorce. It was a terrible shock to her, and she ran out of the house. That's the last time I saw her. No, I see. Oh, if she's fallen in with bad company and gotten into trouble, then it, it could even be all my fault. Well, I'm afraid that doesn't help much at this point, Mrs. Well, what Baker? can be done? How can I find now, her? You say she called approximately ten minutes ago. Uh, yes. Have you received any calls since then? No. Uh, it's possible the phone company will cooperate with us in helping us to trace that call. Oh, I hope so. I'll get to work on it at once. <laughs> Winslow speaking. Hello, Chuck. This is Jim Taylor. Yes, Jim. I just interviewed the Baker girl's mother. Yes? She called home about ten minutes before I got there. I traced the call. It came from a diner out on Route 28. I see. I'll give you the location, Chuck, and you meet me out there. Any luck, Jim? Oh, I just talked to the manager of the diner. You have any information? No, he just went on duty. His night man went home about an hour ago. Mm -hmm. And he's the man to see? That's right. Did you get his address? Yeah, I've got it right here. Let's go. Well, I talked to the counter man. What's the story? I described the Baker girl to him. He remembers her all right. She came in with another girl. What about the two young men? No sign of them. Mm -hmm. Did you notice if they drove up? Oh, he said they came on foot. I've got a hunch that tells us where to find them. Hey, Marty, you gonna leave the car here? Sure, we'll be pulling right out. Let's go and get the girls. Okay. I hope they aren't disappointed about this heap. Why should they be? Ah, they got that class the other one had. It'll get us to New York just as good. Go 
Go ahead. Right. Hiya, girls. Oh, hiya, Marty. Mac. Hiya. Well, what's the matter with her? Oh, she's just got a hangover. That isn't it at all, Wendy. Well, what is it? I don't want to go to New York. What's got into you? I want to go home. Now, don't start that again. I've already told you why you couldn't. Come on, let's get out of here. Okay. Come on, Gloria. I'm not going. Now, look, we ain't leaving you here. I'm not going, I said. What'll we do, Marty? She's coming if we have to drag her out. Now, get up. No. Get up. Let go of me. Stop your yelling. Oh. Hey, Marty, none of that. You keep out of this. Stop pushing her around. Look, I'll give it to both of you. In a... Lay off of that, son. Hey, who are you? I'm a special agent of the FBI. Oh. I'll handle him, Jim. Oh. Come on, you two. Okay, sir. Oh, now, wait a minute. Now, get what? going. Young lady? Yes, you, sir. Uh, you're the Baker girl? Thank heaven you're here. How did you find us? Oh, I traced your call to the diner across the highway, miss. When I heard you'd come in there on foot, I knew you were somewhere in this neighborhood. Then I remembered this tourist camp. Oh. All right, Miss Baker. Let's get out of here. Marty Powell and Mac Hanford were sent to a reformatory. They will remain there until they are 21 years old. Their companion, Wendy Price, was placed on probation for five years. Gloria Baker had no charges placed against her. And thus, your FBI and the local police helped straighten out another delinquency problem. If your child is headed for trouble, he might be as fortunate as these, and he might escape with only official censure. But that would be a foolhardy gamble to take. For not many juvenile delinquents are that fortunate. Your FBI sincerely trusts that you will not depend on the chance that your child will be rescued from trouble before that trouble develops and will be given a second chance. Be a good parent and help your child grow up so he'll never need a second chance. Medical servants are among the most highly respected members of society with special regard for the nurse, sterilizing instruments, developing x-ray plates, administering anesthesia, calming the patient, the ever-present nurse. Though there are more graduate nurses in service than ever before, constantly increasing needs for nursing personnel have created a demand for still more. The opportunity for a professional education with such interesting studies as psychology, sociology, child care, and physiology awaits thousands of alert girls who choose nursing as their career. Airlines, Red Cross, public health, hospitals, these and many other fields await the graduate nurse. If you're a young lady seeking a future with meaning, go to your nearest hospital to discover more about the career of a graduate nurse. Next week, we will dramatize another case from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Its subject... Forgery. Its title, Old Lady Larceny. The incidents used in tonight's broadcast are adapted from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. However, all names used are fictitious, and any similarity thereof to the names of places or persons, living or dead, is accidental. Tonight, the music was composed and conducted by Frederick Steiner. Your narrator was William Woodson, and Special Agent Taylor was played by Stacy Harris. Others in the cast were Irene Anders, Eddie Firestone, Lamont Johnson, Ronnie Liss, Alice Morse, Steve Pendleton, and Ann Whitfield. Bill Spargo speaking. This is Your FBI is a Jerry Devine production. Tune in again next week at the same time, when over most of these stations, the American Broadcasting Company will bring you another thrilling transcribed story from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Old Lady Larceny on This is Your FBI. Stay tuned for the adventures of Ozzie and Harriet. This program came to you from Hollywood. This is ABC Radio Network.